Camp David, certainly by ground um, to the White House, but it's overcast and not safe today here in Washington for a helicopter delivery of the president. The one suspects that he is going to be meeting. UFO believers, listen up. You may well be vindicated. We are back with an out-of-this-world town square and a new book out later this week. Government officials, pilots, and scientists going on the record about their own close encounters. Uh, Michio Kaku, professor of physics at CUNY University and host of Sci-Fi Science on the Science Channel, got to read the book early, and he joins us with a review. Quite simply, Professor, do unidentified flying objects without question exist? 95% of all UFO sightings can be immediately identified as the planet Venus, weather balloons, weather anomalies, swamp gas, you name it, we've got it nailed. It's the 5% that give you the willies. 5% remain totally unexplained. And uh, you're saying to 5% unexplained to the point where they are legitimately an unidentified flying object. And we're talking about generals. We're talking about Air Force pilots. We're talking about governors of states that claim that, hey, this is beyond our understanding of the laws of physics. Can I have an unidentified flying object that is not necessarily from some other place? It's possible, but we've looked at all the alternatives. Uh, these are multiple sightings by multiple modes. In other words, pilots, eyewitnesses, radar, visual sightings. These are very hard to dismiss, the, the handful of sightings. Uh, one over Alaska, another over Belgium, another, another over Iran. The handful of things that still cannot be explained defy known laws of physics. So then, by that definition, does this confirm the existence of life on other planets, in your opinion? I wouldn't go that far. We need alien DNA or an alien chip. That would nail it to the wall right there. We don't have that. We don't have the smoking gun. But this book is as close as you're going to get to the smoking gun. We're talking about senior military officials who were involved in the investigations of these incidents saying we are clueless. If you were to look at those who argue, well, hang on, there's no way that they could get here from some other planet, that, they, that, that the technology doesn't exist, the stars are too far away, you were but that sort of thinking with what? We, those people assume that they may be 100 years ahead of us, in which case it's impossible for them to reach us. But if they're a thousand, a million years ahead of us, then new laws of physics begin to open up. So we have to open our mind to the possibility that they're not just a super version of us, that they could be thousands, millions of years more advanced. Why would they not then pay us a visit in a way that is more recognizable? Go visit the White House, maybe stop out to Yellowstone. My point of view is if you're walking on a country road in St. Ant Hill, you go down to the ants and say, I bring you trinkets, I bring you bees, I give you nuclear energy, or perhaps maybe you step on a few of them. If they're that advanced, maybe they simply are not that interested in us. All right. Listen, Professor, it is an absolute pleasure. Um, if we have any strange sightings, at least now I know who to call. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> do you before I let you go, do you teach on this subject at, at, at the university? On uh, UFOs I mentioned it when I teach astronomy, also on sci-fi science. We have a whole episode about what kinds of physics could open up in the next thousand, next million they years. They could let us travel a few million miles at a time. New kinds of physics on the science channel. The truth is out there somewhere, and according to new files released by the UK's Ministry of Defense, Sir Winston Churchill might have had a hand in concealing it. According to the documents, Churchill ordered the cover-up of a UFO sighting in order to prevent mass panic. Clyde Symington is now a businessman. He was the Republican governor of Arizona for six years, elected when the first George Bush was president. 
Now, a decade after leaving the State House, he takes me to a Phoenix park and discloses something unlike anything uttered by any other high-level U.S. politician. If you, if you had been here ten years ago and standing out here and looking up there at the, um, at the lights and the view, um, you would have been astounded. You would have been amazed. Governor Symington is referring to what is now known as the Phoenix Lights, an object videotaped by many and seen by thousands. Good morning, everyone. My name is Donna Hare, and I worked at Philco Ford Aerospace for, from 1967 to 1981. During that time, I was a design illustrator, draftsman. Uh, I did the launch slides and landing slides, and also projecting plotting boards, lunar maps for NASA. We were a contractor, but at most of the time I worked on site, <clears throat> excuse me, in Building 8. I had the opportunity to do extra work during downtime, which was between missions, and I walked into a photo lab, which was the NASA lab, across the hallway. I had a secret clearance, which is not that high, but I was able to go into restricted areas, which this was. Uh, at the time, I was talking to one of the techs in there, and he drew my attention to a photograph, that, a NASA photograph. It had a dot on it. And I said, what is that? Well, he drew my attention to it, and, he, and I said, is that a, a dot on the emulsion? And he said, and he's smiling, and he has his hands crossed, and he said, uh, round dots on the emulsion don't leave round shadows on the ground. And this was an aerial photograph of the Earth, I'm assuming the Earth, because it had pine trees on it, and the shadows of the craft, or whatever it was, were in the same angle as the trees. And by its very nature, UFO, and I wanted to clarify that to a gentleman that was talking to me, means unidentified. So I did not know what this was. But I realized at this point that it's very secret, that it was kept secret because I asked him, what are you going to do with this piece of information? And he said, we always airbrush these out before we sell them to the public. So this is the parking lot. This is the administration building here. This is the main terminal here. And I imagine it's a pretty busy facility, you know, ships coming and going. But it's not an airport, it's very likely a spaceport. It is on the surface and it's on the equator of Mars. And if you're ever interested in launching a vehicle from a planet, you put it on the equator and you take advantage of the rotation of the planet.